Hey, uh, I'm, I'm Adam, this is Felipe, and uh, this is our self-balancing robot. You want to show, show it working? And, um, I, and I can see it rocking back and forth there as it, as it goes from one side to the other. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't quite balance, <laughs> but, it's, but it's pretty close. It definitely, definitely takes as long as possible to fall. Yes, right. So it's it's got a nice long fall time, mm -hmm. and 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 so what algorithm are you using here? You're, you you have you have an accelerometer that you're reading. Right. So we have a, a little um, MPU sixty fifty has an accelerometer and a gyroscope that we use to take angle measurements. We tried several different filters on those measurements until we settled on uh, one that mostly relies on the gyroscope because uh, the readings are so quick that we find that those. Uh, yeah, the, the gyroscope readings are just much more consistent. Um, the gyroscope works really well in the short term, um, so we high pass filter it, and then we low pass filter the accelerometer um, so that the angle doesn't drift too much in the long run. Um, but one of the major things we noticed was that our motors just can't really provide enough torque once the angle um, <coughs> deviates by a certain amount from upright. Uh, it will just completely, uh, it'll run away from us. We can't really recover. So you think part of the, that the, 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 the torque limit on the motor is, is, is what's... Uh... Yeah, that's our best bet. Uh, we've played a lot with the, the height and weight distribution of the robot. We spent a lot of time trying to shave off as much weight as possible in order to help with that. And we saw some success. The issue is that as we decrease in the maths, is always helpful, but as we make the robot shorter, even though the amount of torque we needed to generate from the motors would decrease, the a shorter robot falls faster. Right. And so we need to be able to generate more, uh, like a, a faster rotation from the from the motors. Mm -hmm. So we ran into another wall there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just couldn't um, get enough RPMs out of the. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, the control is just it's just a simple PID algorithm with a very large P term and a pretty small I term. We didn't see too much of effect from the I term, yeah. uh, but the D term is completely turned off. Okay. Um, we saw very little help from that. The D term makes uh, the robot super jittery, and once the robot uh, rocks back and forth too much, the data from the accelerometer just kind of becomes garbage. Yeah. Right, right, okay. Um, and another thing, the, the I term doesn't really matter because like by the time it like the I term accumulates to the point where it affects things. It's already falling over. It's all yeah. Going, yeah. I mean okay. I think that so our our P term is set to about uh, it, it's set to five hundred, which means that at two degrees of rotation the robot is about eighty percent uh, full okay. output. So it's go it's ramping up pretty quickly. Very quickly. Okay. Um, and it also means that yeah. Beyond plus or minus two degrees from center, we're we're you're saturated. We're just we're just trying to like run the motors as fast as we can. Got it. Um, that also meant we spent quite a bit of time trying to find the balance point. Um, yeah. And you know that's tough to do because every time we pick it up or it falls over or we come back next morning, the IMU has shifted slightly. Yeah, um, and that really affects. Like, so mm -hmm. we have we have the balance point and P and I terms all connected to potentiometers that we can very easily access mm -hmm. and modify. Uh, really made our lives easier. So you don't have to reprogram to change PID. No. Nope. Right. Got it. Or okay. to like affect where it was, where the vertical position was. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.